every night's opening night you can't start what, what we call in this business walking a, walking a play when you get to know it like the back of your hand you can't start walking it you've still got to think when you stop thinking you become uh, your own caricature uh, and, and, and the people know you know if you're not trying to deliver and trying to get the laughs but as I say this cast I can't uh, praise them enough they're, they're fantastic are you enjoying being in it? Because I know sometimes these shows, that they take you from town to town, you're living out of a suitcase, you're doing the same lines every night. I mean, is it a fun atmosphere to do these type of shows? It is. This cast are lovely, and uh, we do get on. There, is, there, there isn't a weak link. Everybody's got a sense of humour. We're having a great time. Uh, touring is very hard, uh, uh, and I don't think I'm going to do it anymore, to tell you the truth. But uh, I haven't done it for years, and I've done this, and I've loved every minute of it. But uh, I'm semi-retired anyway, so I don't think I'm going to do it anymore. Why is that? Is it because of the, the, the living out of a suitcase? You miss your family? What is it? Yeah, it's, it's the family. I, I mean, I've always been out of a suitcase, and I get back to the family every week. But uh, it's just living out of a suitcase, yeah. It's very tiring. Uh, and I've been in this business on the 15th of uh, January, 48 years. Long time, mate really is a long time and you're so well known you're one of those people that I, I I'm so inspired to talk to because you made the character your own I'm talking about Heidi High now oh, when yeah. you're in that and and it became such a legendary program and everybody knows you for it does that though have a double side to it because I know some stars are embarrassed by what made them famous I spoke to a star recently from Neighbours who said don't mention Neighbours and I'm thinking well we don't know you for anything else why would you do that how are you with it well uh, that is a ridiculous thing to say I mean uh, if you want fame, there's a price to pay. And I think it's a nice price, because it's lovely that people, even now, every day, they still, still uh, recognize me. And with a face like this, I mean, how can I hide it? I mean, if beauty's skin deep, I was born inside out. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't bother me, uh, people coming up and wanting autographs and wanting to talk to you, because they love that show, because it has, it has become a classic, hasn't it? I mean, it's like Dad's Army now, it has become a... A classic and I was very very proud to be in it uh, and Ted was a lovely man he wasn't a bad man Ted he was a lovable rogue all he wanted were uh, a few quid out of bingo a case of Newcastle Brown and a bird in his shelly <laughs> that's all Ted wanted out of life <laughs> don't we all yeah <laughs> Ted didn't get it we were only pretending you know what were the days like when you were recording that because it seemed like you were having so much fun we now remember it so fondly was it hard work at the time was it fun at the time Oh, it's hard work. I mean, showbiz is, mate, but uh, oh, it's terrific fun. I've, I've got the uh, one thing they can't take away from you, memories. I've got nine years of bliss in my head. We had a great time with IDI. And everybody in IDI were nice as well. We got on not like a house on fire. But it certainly was hard work, mate, no mistake. You've got to mention Perry and Croft, the writers, because uh, they were very clever. They took a dozen people from real life, picked them up, put them somewhere else and told you about them. And have you noticed everything they've written? such as uh, Dad's Army, It Ain't Our Fault, Mum, uh, IDI, You Rang Me Lord. I, I, it took me two years to notice it. All their characters are failures. Did you ever notice that? You no. think about it. You're right, they're all tragic in a they're way, all, aren't they? They're all tragic, yeah, and the yeah. Brits love an underdog. They're very clever people. It took me two years to realise it. David Croft, the guy has to be one of the greatest comic writers we've ever had. Well, yeah, but not just his writing. I mean, Jimmy wrote with him, but David went on from there. I mean, he is a genius, David Croft, because he wrote it and also produced and directed everything he did. I mean, if he says it's Thursday, it's Thursday. He, he is the man. We, we, we have nothing but to praise and love for the man. Uh, and Jimmy as well, because Jimmy was a great writer. But that, that was Jimmy Dunn. David did all the producing and the directing as well. It was amazing, amazing man. I was here eight years ago, me, uh, I'm digressing for a bit. I was in pantomime with uh, Joe Pasquale, uh, Winter Davis, and uh, you know her off uh, the Rod Hall show, Grot Bags, the yes. witch, the big green witch, she was here. And we had a fantastic season, it was lovely. And I haven't been back since eight years, so it's lovely to be back if only for a week. What's it like working with Joe? I mean, he's always fun when we have him on. I mean, is he great to work with? Oh, Pasquale? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a diamond, a diamond uh, geezer, as they say, in his part of the world. Yeah, he's a lovely man, Joe, and a very talented man, too. Yeah, he's, uh, he... I haven't seen him for quite a while, Joe. I'm looking forward to seeing him, and we'll bump into one another. We always do, eventually. 
I love talking to people like you because as I say your talent stands before what you do there's so many people now who come through we're here one minute and they never gone the next I mean I can talk to you guys year on year on year mm-hmm. and you're doing different stuff and that's such a I think compliment to your talent that you yeah. keep going because if you weren't any good you wouldn't get the work that, well that's true and that's that's true in any walk of life really but especially showbiz if uh, if you come and you end up as a fly by night as you say you're, you're one day gone the next and that does happen to a lot of them but uh, some of the people stay and I've been fortunate enough, to, fortunate enough to be one of them I want to talk to you about one thing that you did in your career which I would think would be a huge memory probably on par with Heidi High which was when you were at the Palladium in Oliver oh, yeah. that had got to be a thrill to be in the palace of show business well it is I mean it's the most uh, famous theatre in the world uh, and I saw Macintosh and, and Mr Bart and they gave me the part for the last ten months it run about three and a half years you know uh, and I will say this, it, it was, uh, what a production. I mean, it cost him five million to put on. And he got his money back before he opened the door for the first night in advance. I mean, he, he's, there is amazing man, him and Webber, they're, they're special. And uh, I will say this about the Palladium. Uh, the only time in my career, I, I've, I've never uh, knowingly walked a show in my life, and I certainly didn't on that one. But to be in a thing 10 months after three months you know every dot uh, you know every wart but I've never been in a long running thing where I've come down those steps that was his entrance every night and got that same buzz as I got on the opening night it, it was there's something magic about that theatre I don't I can't explain what it is but everybody that's been anybody or is anybody has worked the Palladium you name all the the big American stars, Sonata, Ella Fitzgerald, Danny Kay, I mean, just to mention a few, hundreds, thousands of them. Uh, and to be on the same stage is in their footsteps to me. Uh, I was in awe. It gave me a great thrill. So, I mean, I, I, it was fantastic that I really enjoyed that. Uh, it's lovely talking to you, mate. It really is. Thank you so much. Nice to talk to you. Okay, bye. <laughs>